Hi, and welcome back to another maths video. Here I'll be covering functions. A function is something that changes an input into an output. So, for example, if I have the number 3, and I add a 4 onto it, then I get an output of 7. So, the 3 is the input, the plus 4 is the operation the function has performed on the input, and the 7 would be my output. This whole thing over here is what is known as the function. The way we'd write this in maths would be f bracket x, close bracket, where f is the name of the function and x is the input to the function. It doesn't always have to be f though, it can be any letter. So let's look at this function. f of x is equal to x squared plus 5. What this function does is it takes an input, this x, and puts it inside this function, uh, specifically wherever you see the same letter. So in this case, wherever you see an x. The function then squares the x, or the input, and then adds a 5 onto it. Again, you could think of the function as taking the input, which is again x, then performing the operation on it, which first squares it, so x squared, then adds a 5, so plus 5, and then gives us our output. So if a question asked, what is f of 5 of the function f of x is equal to x over 5 plus 3? Again, all we have to do is take the input, 5, and then put it inside the function. So let's do that. So replace x with 5, we have 5 over 5 plus 3. So 5 over 5 is 1, plus 3 is equal to 4. So our answer is 4. Another question for the same function could be, if f of a is equal to 6, find a. Now, unlike the last question, we don't know what the input is, but we do know what the output is. Now, some people um, get confused by thinking that the 6 is the input, but it's not. It's the output because the function is equal to 6. So now we need to work backwards, right? We need to find a, we need to find the input. And to do that, we need to set this, the function, equal to 6. So if we do that, writing it in terms of a, because a is our input, so a over 5 plus 3 is equal to 6, right? Our output. So again, let's just work backwards. So from this, we come to a over 5 is equal to 3, right? We subtract 3 from both sides. Then we multiply both sides by 5, and we get a is equal to 5 times 3, which is 15. So our input is 15. And we can check that, right? So if we put in 15 instead of x, we get 15 over 5 is 3, plus 3, which is 6, which again is our output over here. Let's look at one final example. So if f of x is equal to 3x minus 2, solve f of 2x minus 1. So again, all we need to remember is that 2x minus 1 is our input, and we need to put that inside of the function, replacing it with the x. Oh, sorry, replacing the x with 2x minus 1. So let's do that. We have 3 times x, but remember our x has been replaced by 2x minus 1. So it's 3 times, instead of x, 2x minus 1, and then minus 2. This gives us 6x minus 3 minus 2, which then gives us 6x minus 5. And that is our answer. Now let's look at special types of functions. First, we've got inverse functions. So we know that a function takes an input and produces an output. An inverse function basically does the opposite. It describes how we get from our output back to our input. So if we have 4 as an input, and then put it inside a function that multiplies by 3, we get an output of 12. An inverse function asks, so like, what do we need to do to get from our output 12 back to our input, which is 4? And that would be to divide by 3. So our inverse function is, in this case would be to divide by 3. In maths, we would show an inverse function as f to the power of minus 1 x. Now some people get confused by the minus 1, thinking back to indices. 
where minus 1 means 1 over, in this case, f. But it's not that. The minus 1 just means the inverse. So for the example given here, our original non-inverse function would be f of x is equal to 3x. Right, because we're multiplying the input by 3. Right, 3 times x. So to get our inverse function, we need to divide the output by 3, as we've shown here. So what our inverse function does is it divides the output by 3, so we can write it as f of minus 1, remember the inverse of x, is equal to x over 3. Right, it takes the input and divides it by 3. And that's how we get our inverse function. But what if we have a harder example, like this one? We can't use the number machine like we did last time, so we're going to have to use a method. So, for the first step, we have to replace the f of x with y. And that's just for convenience, as you'll see later. So y is equal to x over 3 plus 4. Next, we have to get this equation in terms of x instead of y. And that's because instead of finding the output, we now want to find the input, which is x. So let's subtract 4 from both sides. We get y minus 4 is equal to x over 3. And then let's um, multiply both sides by 3. So we get x is equal to 3 times y minus 4. And our final step is to replace the x with f of x and the y with x. And that's basically because um, a function is generally written in terms of x, not y. So final step, x is replaced by f of x. So f of x is equal to 3 times, instead of y we have x, so it's x minus 4. And this is our inverse function. But remember, to write an inverse function, it has to be a minus 1 on top. So this is our final inverse function for this bigger original function. Another special type of function is called a composite function. And a composite function is basically a function inside another function. So an example would be f, g, x. And this basically means f of g of x. So you do g of x, and then whatever the output of that is, you put that inside f. So an example would be if f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 2, what is g f of 2? So again, g f of 2 is the same as g of f of 2. So first we take f of 2. Just focus on this bit. So f of 2, let's put 2 into the equation, um, sorry, function. So 2 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. So we can replace f of 2 with 5. Now we have g of 5. So what is g of 5? Well, it's 5 squared. Let me just move that here. Um, so it's 5 squared plus 2, which is equal to 25 plus 2, which is 27. So our answer for g f of 2 is 27. So another similar question says, um, if f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 3, what is f f x? So this may seem confusing, but it's literally the exact same thing. So f of f of x is in the question, f of f of x. So let's just focus on this, in, um, this inside part. So what is f of x? And note, they haven't actually given us an input. So instead of like putting something in, we just have to take the whole of this. So f of x is 2x plus 1. So we get f of Instead of f of x, we get 2x plus 1. Right? And now we have to find f of 2x plus 1. So let's put this inside our function. So it's 2 times our input, which is 2x plus 1, plus 1. So this gives us 4x plus 2 plus 1. And so our final answer is 4x plus 3. Another special type of function is called a piecewise function. And this is basically made up of um, different types of functions. So like this is one function, this is another, and this is another. So 
this um, so when thinking of graphs you can think of the f of x to mean the y so this um, this column right here tells you what the line is or the or the curve or whatever so this would mean y is equal to 4 so the line y is equal to 4 this again would mean y is equal to uh, 4 minus x so the line 4 minus x uh, and again y is equal to 2 uh, and this column over here tells you the range of the functions so the range of all the x's so let's draw each of these functions and make it into a piecewise function so first we've got the line y is equal to 4 between minus 2 and 0 so y is equal to 4 is this line right where y is always equal to 4 but it has to be in between minus 2 and 0 so let's draw that let's try as best as I can so that is so that satisfies this function let's go on to the next one so that is y is equal to 4 minus x so we know the y-intercept is 4 so it has to start here and um, it has a gradient of, of, of minus 1 so it has to go down and, um, and to the right every time and again the interval is only between 0 and 2 so we can only draw it from here to here so let's draw that down like that and it stops there and we have our final line which is y is equal to 2 again the same thing here but for 2 and this is between 2 and 4 so let's draw that 2 and 4 and this is our piecewise function for this finally we need to talk about domain and range the domain of a function is all the possible um, inputs of a function and the range is all the possible outputs so say we have the function f of x is equal to x squared the graph would look something like this so the domain remember is all the possible inputs and um, it's the x-axis so when you think of the domain think of the x-axis so what um, possible x values can we have for x squared well we can have anything right so if you have minus a million it will still have some sort of output so the domain is all possible values of x so all x the range on the other hand is um, all the possible y values so remember it's all the possible outputs and whenever you think of range think of y so what possible y values can we have for x squared well if you look at the graph it's anything above zero all right we can't have anything below zero the way we'd write that would be f of x has to be greater or equal to zero f of x remember is equal to y it's the same thing um, as y let's do another example so we have the function f of x is equal to sine x so we know this um, the sine graph looks like this right so to find the domain we need to find all the possible inputs so all the possible x values and what are they well it can be any number right you can have I don't know like minus a million and it will still go into sine of x so the domain is all possible values of x the range on the other hand remember it's the y and that only extends to 1 and minus 1 right it doesn't go above that so the range is between minus 1 and 1 so we write it like this minus 1 greater than or equal to f of x remember which is y great um, sorry less than or equal to um, 1 and this is our range so thank you for watching what I believe is a pretty amazing video if you liked it please do subscribe like the video comment whatever thanks and I'll see you in the next one